This week's cover story, Plan Z, looks at an up-and-comer of French politics, a controversial journalist by the name of Eric Zemmour. He's already polling higher than Marine Le Pen, but his critics accuse him of being a far-right candidate and often compare him to Donald Trump. So who is Zemmour? Freddie Gray, The Spectator's deputy editor, pens this week's cover story, and he joins me now alongside Jonathan Miller, who writes about a Zemmour rally he attended last week. Freddie, tell us about Eric Zemmour, who hasn't even declared his candidacy yet. Well, it's, it's a bit of a, a joke, really, that he hasn't declared his candidacy, because everybody knows uh, that he's running, uh, and he appears to have quite a sophisticated operation behind him. Uh, and the reason we at The Spectator know about this is because of the the brilliant Jonathan Miller, who's about to start talking. Uh, and he has been on this story for The Spectator ahead of everyone, which means that back in March, um, we ran a piece uh, saying that he would be running and to take him seriously as a pr possible pr presidential candidate. Uh, and when Jonathan first suggested it, I thought this seemed a little bit eccentric and a little bit out there. But he's been proven uh, brilliantly right, because Zemmour is emerging as a very serious presidential candidate. Uh, and there's a lot of comparisons with Donald Trump. There are some good points of comparison there because the phenomenon is, is quite real and he's a very mediagenic personality. Um, but he's also got a, a, a more serious streak. And as I try and say in the piece, um, and I'm not the first to make the comparison, but uh, as I try and say in the piece, he's actually a bit more of a Boris Johnson-like figure in my mind, in that he's a He's a first-rate mind, he writes his own books, um, and he's a patriotic th thinker who seems to fail upwards. Mm. Well, we'll come back to his ideology and these comparisons, certainly. But first, Jonathan, as Freddie says, you've been writing about Zamora for the magazine for months now. He's a journalist turned politician. You recently attended one of his rallies. What was it like? It was amazing. I went down to Bézier on Saturday night, which is the ancient winemaking capital of Occitanie here in the south of France, to the Zinga Zanga Theatre, where I found an hour and a half uh, before his speech was even scheduled to begin, a vast crowd of people stretching around the whole building. Um, and I took the opportunity from my training as a reporter to go around and talk to as many of them as possible and I found an almost fanatical degree of enthusiasm for Eric Zemmour, who is this, you know, pied noir, black-footed, uh, so-called uh, Algerian Jew, um, in the heart of what was once National Front territory, inspiring, you know, a couple of thousand locals to show up and cheer him to the rafters. Um, and he did. He delivered a, a, a remarkable speech. I think Freddie's right that he's got, you know, this, this Trumpian ability to somehow get people to stamp their feet and clap their hands uh, with delight. And he's got the kind of the wit and the erudition of Boris. Um, yes, some of that too. Um, but I think he's also got... Um, an analysis that is playing very well with the French who are disillusioned with Macron, disillusioned with Marine Le Pen as, her, as his preferred opposition, and who are looking for a, a, a something fresh. Um, I think they find his analysis, analysis of the social crisis in France makes him a little like Douglas Murray of our own parish, um, who... Uh, you know, and there are many points of convergence between the strange death of Europe by Douglas and uh, Le Suicide Francais by, uh, by Zemmour. So there's some of that too. Um, and I wouldn't hesitate from saying there's a, there's a little bit of Thatcher in him, or quite a lot, because he's, he's a culture warrior. He, he, um, his, his view, which he expresses forcefully, is that the kind of woke groupthink <clears throat> that is uh, infesting our universities and schools, public institutions, public broadcasters, government, that it, that the, it is the duty to go out and, and confront that um, intellectually. And for this, he's been called a uh, racist, an Islamist, 
Islamophobe. Um, he's characterised continually as the extreme right by the BBC, by the Times, by the Guardian, by the New York Times. He's a much more complex guy than that. But, Freddie, these accusations have been levied at him and with some backing, he has been convicted of inciting racial hatred. If Brits have heard of them, they're likely to have heard of him as a far-right candidate. So perhaps your comparison to Boris Johnson or Jonathan's comparisons to the spe spectator Douglas Murray wouldn't go down so well with the people we've actually compared him to. Well, po possibly not. I I'd say his, his rhetoric is more uh, blunt than Boris's, perhaps. But he certainly, he, just like Boris, he has a back catalogue of articles uh, and books uh, that anybody could pour over and find lots to be offended by. He said a lot of very provocative and shocking things. But we are now living in a slightly different political moment, I think, now, where politicians can succeed, uh, not in spite, but because they say uh, shocking and provocative things. And it makes people sit up and take notice, and it makes the media engage with them. And what's very interesting with uh, the sort of media reactions to Zemmour, and particularly the foreign media reaction to Zemmour, uh, foreign to France, uh, is that they have this strange thing of being angry about how interested they are in him. So you see a lot of articles uh, berating publications uh, for showing so much interest in him, which is it's quite a funny dynamic. But it's how uh, a lot of populists succeed, um, and it seems to be how Zemmour is causing so much uh, aggravation and interest in this presidential race. Jonathan, uh, you recently noted in your article that you've spoken to French voters uh, who intend to vote for Zemmour but have previously voted for Sarkozy or Macron. Uh, perhaps that's a, a good comparison to the Obama-Trump voters, which certainly existed in the United States uh, in 2016. You also said just now that it's more of a nuanced discussion whether or not he is far right. But how have his views changed or what's different from when he was convicted? Well, the far right label is a very easy label for anybody uh, on the left to apply to anybody on the right who they don't really want to argue with and they denounce them as far right. I mean, Zamor's conviction is a very... French justice is very instrumentalised and French magistrature uh, and its trade union are very left-wing and they use prosecutions to diabolize, to demonize their political opponents. And this offense of inciting racial hatred, which is exactly the same one that the Scottish Nationalist Party is trying to force through north of, north of the border, is one that is, is pretty vague. I mean, the truth is that there were blacks in the line to see Zamor. Uh, Zamor speaks sincerely about how Muslim families are the victims of disorder in, uh, in, 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 uh, in areas of France that are, that are dominated by, by these gangs. Um, and uh, I don't think he's a racist. I think it's, I think, you know, every, anybody nowadays can be called a fascist just for disagreeing. I, doubtless Margaret, I mean, Margaret Thatcher is called a fascist, of course. Um, but I think he's as much of a fascist and a racist as she was, i.e. not one at all. Um, I think his, his power is rhetorical and intellectual, and he has a style which is, um, is and isn't Trumpian. It's Trumpian in that it cuts through. He has, a, he has an extraordinary way with the French language. Um, but it's not Trumpian in that, you know, there's a real, it's not slogans, he's not demonizing his opponents or calling them names or fat or stupid or anything like that. He's, he's saying how successful they are and how uh, the biggest rounds of applause in Bézier, frankly, he said, you know, the left is out of power, but its ideas march on. The right um, has been in power 40 the last 60 years in France, but they've just capitulated. And that's why the institutions are going. And he very much focuses on this idea of, of, of you know, penser uh, reçu, you know, uh, group think and, uh, and critical race theory and wokeism. And he's saying France has had enough of this and he doesn't want any more of it. And, his, and he says the job of politicians is to get into office and, and not 
consider that they've succeeded just by winning an election, but then to conduct uh, a, an ideological struggle. And this, of course, is what Thatcher did. And that's why I think that of all the comparisons um, made for Zamor, he is the Margaret Thatcher that France never had. He's the guy who potentially could shake things up. But first, of course, he has to you know, get to the second round, which is not easy. And then he has to beat Macron, which is going to be even more difficult. So, you know, this, this is a strong point. You know, I mean, he's by no means won the presidency at this point. Freddie, what's the Zimor ideology? What are the policies that would come with his election? And is there such thing as a typical Zimor fan? Well, the, uh, immigration is a uh, is obviously the 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 big Zamor talking point and has been uh, for for quite a few years. Um, but his campaign, the people behind him, are very keen to stress that he's a lot more than that. Uh, he has quite a detailed plan for the economy that involves uh, cutting inheritance tax, uh, reforming corporation tax. He has a perform- he has a plan for reforming healthcare. He also wants to do away with Macron's vaccine passports, which will be very popular with a large section of the, Ameri- of the French public. Uh, and he wants to increase the size of the military um, and sort of make good on some commitments Macron has made. Uh, he also wants to get out of NATO's integrated command structure, which is quite an interesting symbolic move. Uh, and I think the idea behind that would be to sort of reset uh, a relationship with Russia, between fr- the relationship between France and Russia, um, and not have the sort of what, what some people call the sort of reflexive Western anti-Putinism. Um, so he has a lot of ideas. Uh, as for who the typical Zimor voter is, uh, that's a very interesting question and one I think Jonathan is better placed to answer than me. But it seems to me that they are slightly upper, more upper class than the classic Front National voter. And I realise that's a snobby thing to say, but the fact is there's always been a snobbery towards uh, Marine Le Pen and her family, they're seen as sort of uh, deplorables. You know, the, 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 the voting place is a deplorable voting place. And Macron doesn't seem to have that problem. As, as Jonathan has noted, a lot of his crowds are sort of young, affluent people. Um, he appeals to secular liberals, he appeals to Catholics, uh, and he appeals to small business owners. He has the ability to pe- appeal to lots of different people because he seems to be something new. And Jonathan, in the polls, Zamor now leads Le Pen. Why is she losing out to him? Is it for Freddie's reason that um, certain people just feel like it's more okay to identify with Zamor than it is Le Pen? I think a lot of Le Pen voters are aware that the Le Pen brand has has overrun its course. Her father lost, what I think, five elections. She's lost two on the hop. She's kind of an idiot. You know, she was eaten alive by... Macron in the debates last time, she, her economic policy is incoherent. Um, she's attempted to make her party more centrist, but nobody believes it. Um, she's hopeless, and she's lost basically half her support since June. She's gone from, you know, 25, 28% to 12, 14%, depending on the polls. And but the same still, I mean, you, you, might, you might fundamentally disagree with her, or think that she's gone about what she wants to achieve the wrong way. But I mean, she, to say she's an idiot, I mean, she has been quite influential in French politics. She's really put the pressure on... No, she hasn't been. She's, just, she's been very convenient in French politics for, uh, for ensuring, as the Fifth Republic was designed to ensure, that, uh, that the, you know, the moderate centrist you know, moderate writers gets in power. And this is how... And so she, her entire track record is one of failure. She, you know, the, na- the Front National, or the, the, the Rassemblement National, didn't win a single region in France, not one in, in the most recent regional elections. Um, you know, uh, even her militants, even people I know who uh, have supported her in the past, Say, say, you know, aside from anything else, she's a loser. But, you know, as for, you know, the idiot charge, I'm really happy substantiating that. You know, I just refer people to the videos of her debate with Macron, where the, her absolute incoherence on, the, you know, on the future of Europe um, and, and, and France's role in it uh, was, was, was you know, he, he, he crushed her bones and made his bread. Um, 
and uh, she, she, she's terrible on television. Um, I would add one thing to what Freddie said of what, you know, what we're waiting for. You know, we're waiting to see if, 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 uh, if Zamor can attract the 500 uh, sponsorships he needs to, you know, get on the ballot. We're waiting to see if Zamor can raise the 15 million or so euros he needs, you know, to mount a credible campaign and pay people. Um, and we're also waiting to see where he emerges on, 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 the, on the really fundamental issue in France, which is uh, the EU. Because in, in 2005, the French voted by 55% not to sign the constitution. Um, the government ignored them uh, and implemented it anyway, calling it the Lisbon Treaty. And this is a, a fault line in French politics which still exists and on which I think Zemmour is likely to find himself on the side of those saying the 2005 um, referendum, well, he, he, he's saying the 2005 referendum needs to be rerun. Now, if he means it, he's saying we're going to reintroduce referendums into French politics, and we're going to, the politicians are going to have to trust the people to make decisions. Um, this could be very, very revolutionary. So maybe we're in a kind of one of those not infrequent French you know, pre-revolutionary, revolutionary periods, or maybe we're not. I mean, to be to be realistic, Macron, you know, has still got the, the, the money, he's still got the media, you know, he's still got control of the institutions, um, so he's still the favourite. But, but Zemmour is, is, is the, you know, the, the, the flavour of the month, and, um, and we're on it. Freddie, as Jonathan points out there, um, this is by no means if and it sounds like when he does declare his candidacy that Samora is just going to sweep this election. Um, the odds are still stacked against him. But on Jonathan's charge against Le Pen, if she was convenient in French politics, from your reading of the situation, do you think Samora might really stir the pot? I think it is hard to say. I mean, his campaign is still embryonic. It's his, his, the people behind it still call it a pre-campaign. Uh, so it's, it's yet to be born, really. But uh, I think uh, it, it clearly has a lot of momentum behind it and a lot of interest and enthusiasm, which is not something you can say about Marine Le Pen. And, and to repeat, Marine Le Pen has always had the baggage of her father and the baggage of her name. She's never quite been able to cast that off. Um, Zemmour does not have that, and he will be called anti-Semitic even, even though he's Jewish. He'll be called racist. Uh, he will be called a fascist and a Nazi. Um, and it may be that a lot of this will stick to him because he has said so many provocative things in the past. Um, but for now, it looks like he's got serious momentum behind it. Jonathan, this week you've also written about another influential political figure that is running for the presidency. Michel Barnier, who our viewers will certainly know. How is his presidential bid going? Well, you know, as you could tell from that piece, which was in the Spectator Coffeehouse blog today, I, I, uh, I didn't do a lot to hide my negative feelings about Barnier. But I have to say that my conclusion is that Barnier is not going to be the next president of France. And that I can tell you, Kate, that this week I try to count up the number of prospective candidates for the presidential election in France, and there are more than 40 of them. And that's not even counting Zemmour, nor Macron, who hasn't yet officially announced that he's running again. So um, we have, uh, you know, we have, a, you know, a grand national kind of steeplechase with tons of fences. The one thing you can be certain about in French politics is that French presidential elections can be very unpredictable. And that's how we got Macron, because who saw him coming? Um, and uh, I can't think, I'd like to claim that I did, but, you know, anyway. Francois Hollande, Francois Hollande saw him coming. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, there are this, there, there is this um, track record of, you know, favourites falling at, at the equivalent of the political equivalent of Breach's Brook and uh, breaking their legs. And so um, with this two-round system, um, Macron's preferred opponent has always been Marine Le Pen, because he knows he can, you know, eat her alive. Um, but, but Zemmour is his intellectual equal, at least, and they're both really smart guys. So you can look forward, you know, if Zemmour does make it into the second round, 
the, the debate between Zemmour and Macron um, could be very decisive. And, and as a consequence of that, oddly, we could find President Zemmour, although without necessarily a majority party in the National Assembly or the ability to control the civil service. So I think France looks, uh, you know, potentially quite uh, dynamic at the moment.